Hey guys, this is Devin here with Hillbilly Networks. Today I want to show you how to take data you would get in, say, an OTDR shoot uh, about a fiber that's broken somewhere, and this would allow you to determine the exact GPS location or address of where that fiber is damaged. Today we're kind of going to do an example of that, um, not a real scenario. Um, but a mocked up version and in this version basically we are going to have a fiber that runs down this road here into this facility um, and basically there's a little substation here or a supply point where the fiber is distributed from maybe there's a knock or something right here and you shoot that fiber and it's getting 3,000 foot. So what we're going to do here is you're going to right click on the map right there where the substation or the uh, supply point, distribution point, and in telecommunications you sometimes call that a pop. Um, maybe a supply cabinet, an extender site, there's several different terms. Uh, so we're going to go down here and click measure distance. You'll see it created a little dot there. Now we're going to take this and we're going to drag it up. And you don't want to go all the way way out here at first. You want to click here. You want to look down here and see how many feet you got because you don't want to go overdo it. Okay, so that's 2,275 foot. So we're going to go a little bit more. Oh, right there. Okay, we're at about 3,056 feet right now. So now we have determined that our break is somewhere in this location. However, we've got to factor in a couple of things in here. One of the things you've got to factor in is a thing called storage loops as well as a thing called uh, closures. And you've got to determine how many closures there are and how many storage loops there are between here and here. So for, the, for this example, we're just going to say that there are four poles, that it's aerial. This is an airport, so actually we're going to say it's underground. You're not going to have power and telecommunications uh, on telephone poles on an airport. So it's all underground here. So that means, let's say there's four vaults. Uh, these are four concrete vaults inside the ground that the fiber is coiled up in or there's actually a closure where things are being supplied or things were butt spliced together. So we've got four of those. And we've got to figure out on this network how much fiber is in each of those coils or closures. We're going to say in this case, say there's just uh, coils in each one. Generally speaking, um, in my network, I do 150 foot in each. So we would say there's 150 foot, 150 foot, 150 foot, 150 foot. Total of 600 foot. So what we need to do now is that 3,000 foot here, we need to subtract off 600 of that. Because 600 of that 3,000 foot is cooled up. So it's not being stretched out the full way. That means you're actually going to back this last one up. 600 foot and that would bring it somewhere around there or so so your actual location is going to be somewhere around right here and that is actually exactly how you map out fiber using google maps uh, if you use google earth pro it'll let you change uh, you'll see this here says 3056 foot once you get past a certain distance it changes to miles and then if you need footage, you have to get on a calculator and convert from miles to foot uh, to feet. So if you're using Google, Google Earth Pro, um, it allows you to set the parameters of that to say feet. Um, even if you're dealing with a, an extreme distance like 150,000 foot, you still uh, can see feet instead of miles in that case. Which with fiber, you generally want feet or meters, depending on the metric you're used to working with. Because um, miles, a uh, number like 4.21 miles did not help you very much uh, 
because usually when you're talking about optics and stuff like that that perform across the fiber, um, they're not rated in mileage, they're rated in meters, um, sometimes kilometers, uh, usually kilometers. Um, you have some that are 50 km, 80 km, so on and so forth. Um, but that's what you do to determine the break in a fiber where it's exactly located. When I'm called for an outage and I've troubleshooted all the different equipment across the network and I've determined, okay, it's not a switch, it's not you know, a port that's down, it's not the equipment being powered down. Um, and once I've eliminated all that, I'm going to go to probably the customer site because I work for an ISP and then I'm going to shoot back towards a our supply point. And then I'm going to get a footage off of that. And then I'm going to plug that footage into our mapping system or Google Maps. I actually use both. I use our own proprietary mapping system as well as Google Earth. Um, Google Earth tends to be a little bit faster. You can pull that up on your phone quick on an app, make a measurement out in the field. Um, depending on your mapping system, you might have to remote it into a PC. Um, maybe there's an app for it that you have. Uh, but depending on how complex your system is and how small your network is, you know, your mapping may or may not be your best tool for a fast, quick measurement. Uh, if you have any guys, if you guys have any questions or anything uh, related to uh, measuring troubleshooting fiber, uh, please leave them in the comments. Thanks, guys.